Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble. We go from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time and in about 25 minutes from now, now <laughs> we'll have our citizens panel if I'm indeed uh, with the ability to speak English. And uh, But in the meantime, let's talk to our old friend that we talk to once a week. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the other coast of the United States of America, out to San Francisco, California, where he still has a rent control department. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Yes, rent control department. I've got a 2000 Camry with 382,000 miles on it, so I'm a powerful man. You're, you're living large. <laughs> this car won't die. It's unbelievable. Now, now how old is it? The 2000. It's got 382,000 miles on it. Wow. And it and runs great. So. Yeah. Doesn't cost you a lot of money to keep it going? No, no. So that's been good. Very reliable. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That sounds good. That sounds good. Now, you live, uh, you have no car, I assume, in New York. I don't have a car. No, I haven't driven I in. God, I, I don't can't imagine what it would be like to live without a car. I like to drive. Well, but if you lived in New York, you wouldn't want one. You know, it's too much trouble. First of all, you got the cost of the car, all right? That's to begin with. Then the monthly payments on that said car, all right? So then um, uh, you uh, have to add to that uh, the insurance. Uh, and then uh, in New York, you have to add to that the parking, which will be at least 800 a month. 800? 800, yeah, sure. That's about what it would cost to get a monthly wow. parking spot in a garage. And then you never use it. You know, you maybe you use it on weekends. So the question is, you know, how is this saving you any kind of money? It's just better if you, uh, if you don't do anything at all, you know, if you don't have a car. And whenever you need a car, you rent one. Yeah, that would make sense. But therein lies the other rub. Uh, you rent it, and that's fine. But like, for instance, let's say I want to rent it for three days. All right? So I make a deal where I rent it for three days. Uh, I think it was four days. Came out to $750. It's a lot of money. A little steep. Yeah. I, I said, what happens if I rent it for a week? Oh, it's only 320 what? Yeah, we, we ch if you ch if you rent it for a week, it costs less than if you rent it for four days. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of sense does that make? You know, in what it, they used to do that with uh, plane flights. If you did one way, it was more expensive than if you did round trip. Right. So like right, when I, I first that. came back to California and I took a plane, I got a round trip ticket. <laughs> you know? I figured if the day ever came I needed the other part of that ticket I could use it you know nobody knows whether you're going to be successful in San Francisco or not so you know mm -hmm. that 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 was my uh, my my whole um, thing so anyway that you know whatever so uh, how are you doing Bubs doing well I was thinking about you this week as this is out here uh, or Nevada as the uh, Burning Man has started, so I remember we used to go up there. Yeah, what's interesting about Burning Man is uh, there's a smoky haze over Burning Man from the fires in California. <laughs> right, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, and you're going to complain? I mean, it is Burning Man after all, just consider it part of the atmosphere. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I used to go out there, but in the very beginning, when there were about 10,000 people there instead of like, what, 50 or 60,000 that go out there? Crazy now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why go somewhere to get, let's say, get out of the city where everybody from the city is going? 
right? Yeah. Uh, you want to do you want to do that kind of roughing it? Just get a backpack and go out into the wilderness. You know, that'll that'll take care of it, right? Yeah, I never was quite sure what the purpose of the whole event was. Well, it, it was kind of an artistic event in the beginning, especially, and people would do their their thing. You know, uh, like. Uh, uh, I remember back in the first year that I was there, which was about the third year that they held it in the Black Rock Desert. We went in, in year three, four, and five, I think. Um, we said we keep doing it till somebody got killed, and <laughs> and that year three people got killed. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it for us. We that was our deal. We'll keep going till somebody gets killed. <laughs> because it was bound to happen. You know, the bigger the crowds got and... The yeah, anytime you get a big crowd, someone's going to die. Also, you're out in the middle of this desert where you really don't have much of anything. You know, you could start at one end of that desert at night and drive 40 miles to the other end of the desert. It's one of the largest deserts in America. I think it may be the largest, the Black Rock Desert. You could drive to the other end as you start going, you could hit it at 100 miles an hour and then turn your lights off so you don't see anything, and it doesn't matter. Wow. Because until you get to the 40-mile mark, there's nothing to hit. There's, it's just flat, right? So if you take that into consideration, you take the darkness of night, you take the fact that people pitch tents out in the middle of the desert, and then people start driving around in the middle of the night, well... Somebody was bound to run over one of those tents. There you go. <laughs> and then some other guy, I think, uh, got killed just to, in his car, a car accident on the playa. So, you know. But when I first went there, like year three, uh, they had one feature that we just thought was inspired. It was a drive-by shooting range <laughs> where you would get in your car, and if you had a gun... You would drive by, and on the uh, they had a bunch of like stuffed animals. That sounds like fun. And you could shoot from your car, shooting at yeah. the animals. And of course, it was completely safe because there was nobody else around for you know miles. So, but they stopped doing that because they felt eh, the liability, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the guy who started it, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now, um, uh, died this year, last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, uh, the Burning Man isn't, you know, to me it isn't. <laughs> I'm burning. assuming he was cremated. <laughs> I'm they, should have, they should have saved him and done it this year, just uh, cremated him there. He could have been yeah, the real Burning they Man. Should, they should, you know something? He should have wanted that in his will Yeah, or you something. would think. That, you know, throw me on the Burning Man pyre, you know. Um, but... Uh, it, it, that would be that wouldn't be bad, you know. Either that, or it'd at least just scatter my ashes on the fire, right? Mm -hmm. That'd probably be a better thing than for people to go to Burning Man to see a corpse in flames. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would kind of put a pall over the event, don't you think? <laughs> well, that'd be different, you know. Uh, just, oh my God! Yeah, what a pall! Yeah. Um, and then uh, I well I went there with uh, let's see here Brad Carvey was with me, Dana's brother. Dana's brother, yeah. Uh, and uh, who else was me? The guy who uh, was the host of uh, Mystery Theater Two Thousand was with us that year, and uh, it was you know we, we we had a nice time, but. You know, we didn't go back. And then what happened was about a year later, Paul, my best friend, who I went up there with, and we rented these trailers with our group from Play Incorporated, he died. Died at 39. That, yeah. The only guy who was ever willing to invest in my dreams, right? He croaks. And he croaks. And how old, how well, old was he? He was uh, 39. Holy shit. Heart attack. Boom. Gone. Jesus. You know, I get a call one day. I got something to tell you, Alex. What? Paul's dead. What? This is this another Beatles thing here that's going on? You know? Uh, no, Paul Paul Montgomery is dead. And I went, oh, jeez, Almighty. You know? And he was like, he was like my best friend. You know? This is a guy who on weekends I would drive up to Sacramento and then we get in his Ferrari because he loves sports cars. All people 
who were involved in in like uh, tech the tech business love fucking sports cars. Mm-hmm. So you know they have Ferraris, they have uh, you know whatever. So so we got we would go in his car and we would drive up to um, uh, Reno, and then we would uh, hit a couple of tables and uh, he would do gamble where he wanted to gamble, which he liked the uh, what was it he liked. It wasn't the slot machines. It was the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, video vi- poker. Vi- video poker. Yeah. He would sit there playing video poker. And then we'd say, well, we better turn around and go back because it's getting late. And then we'd turn around and go back. You know, one of those night trips to Reno. Either that or I would, we would head over to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Mm-hmm. And, I, of course, I never did anything at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Dennis Hoff likes to say, Alex Bennett's been here the most times without fucking anybody uh, in the hi- history of the Bunny Ranch. Because I just, the hookers, I, now you have a joke about hookers, but I'm sure you feel <laughs> I it. have several, I think. <laughs> yeah, ju- if nothing, just the, say your catchphrase. Uh, which one was that? Hookers, hookers. Hooker. <laughs> Hookers. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, m- middle of the night, you'd be in Berkeley uh, at a massage parlor knocking on the door yelling, What? B-? Are you open? <laughs> <laughs> I have cash. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, that's always been a basic part of your act, but do you, would you really want to have sex with a hooker, or have you? Well, I did when I was younger, yeah, at the uh, Bunny Ranch, in fact. But, uh, it was just... Uh, I, the appeal of it is <laughs> not going through the whole charade of uh, going out with someone. And not having to buy them dinner. Buying them dinner and spending time and trying to be charming. And it's just, you're in, you're out. It's, is, my bre- is my breath okay? I don't give a yeah. shit. This is a hooker. <laughs> yeah, right. But wait a minute, you went to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, but that was that when uh, Dennis Hoff owned it? That was before he had, it was like in the late 70s, yeah. Oh, and it was just another... Tr- yeah, truck like, stop, yeah. Oh my god, you could get sex with one then 1979 for $25. Really? Yeah. Of course, that's like $35 in today's money. <laughs> $25. I based, I based inflation on the price of hookers. <laughs> well, here's what Paul did. Paul would go, he'd get himself a hooker, he'd go into the room, and then he'd sit there and talk with her for an hour, and that was it. He didn't have sex with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I asked uh, Dennis, uh, "Is this common?" And he said, "Most people who hire a hooker go in for the company, not for the sex." Wow! And that uh, it, it, m- most of the women report back, "Hey, well, I didn't have sex with him, but he paid the full, you know, the full thing." So uh, anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's uh, pretty pretty. Uh, so that so he, that's what he liked to do. I hope his ex-wife isn't listening, or his widow <laughs> isn't listening. But I think she knew that too. You know. Well, I can't believe he was thirty-nine. Jesus. And meanwhile, I would sit out in the out out near the bar, talking with Dennis or talking with the hookers, and I didn't I didn't do anything. I didn't. And he always said to me, "Hey, Alex, any woman in the house half price because you know we go fifty-fifty with them, and you have to pay their fifty percent." You know, uh, and I said, "Well, you know, nah, I'll, I'll pass." And it wasn't that I was cheap; I was going to get a discount. You know, it's just that I just it, it never appealed to me the idea of a hooker. Yeah, it uh, wasn't actually that much fun. But, uh... I did it once. Um, in uh, I was in Houston, and a bunch of the guys were going to a whorehouse. So I had never done this, so I figured, what the hell, I'll do it. Hey, I'm married, it's the only way I can cheat, and nobody's going to tell on me, you know. Uh, and I, so I went to this, uh, went to this whorehouse, and I just found it so unsexy, you know. I mean, I liked the pursuit. I liked the seduction. I like having to sp- splash breath spray in my mouth, you know. I mean... <laughs> I like the whole process of seduction, and there's no process of seduction there. So, no, but I think uh, it's crazy that prostitution—it should be legalized and regulated like that. It's, uh, yeah, 
Oh, absolutely. And the only reason it should be regulated is just for health reasons. Health reasons, yeah. Yeah, you know. Otherwise, I'd say let it run rampant. Health but, reasons and safety for the... Uh, I, I can't imagine. A street hooker sounds like... Uh, that sounds like the most dangerous life in the world. The, yeah, one of the one of the uh, one of the proudest moments of my life was uh, Dennis Hoff owned the second whorehouse down the down the street. Okay, so he took me down there. And we sat at the bar, and on the wall there was a picture of me. Really? Yeah, because I was a friend. So There's a picture of me. I think with Dennis maybe, and I just went, "Wow, I finally made it." I you know I never wanted my picture in a delicatessen. Or a dry cleaners. But a whorehouse. But a whorehouse in Nevada, <laughs> that's making it. You know? Uh, that's that's something I can be proud of. You can go out with a smile now. That's, uh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, uh, you know, it, uh, I just never found it something I wanted to do. And I, kept, I told him that. I said, I just don't find it sexy. I don't find it, you know, I... I, I did once, I went to, the, remember what was that one they had near Reno that was the famous one? That was the Mustang the Ranch. The Mustang Ranch. Uh, now, who did I go with? I went with somebody, might have been Paul again, to the, to the Mustang Ranch. And so I figured, as long as I'm here, I may as well experience it. All right? Because I had never experienced, I'd experienced, you know, uh, having uh, sex with a hooker when I was younger, but I never experienced sex at one of these whorehouses, all right? So I went, what the hell? So I said, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know, how do you order up one person? Is that, is there such a thing? <laughs> I want to order one person, please. And they said, okay, well, let's see here. Here are a bunch of women. Uh, you, you, you look okay. You don't look that weathered, you know? Uh, and I said, okay, um, we're, uh, we're going to, uh, so we went in into the room and she did whatever she was going to do. And I think, I think it just amounted mainly to a blow job, mm -hmm. uh, because I didn't, I didn't do any sex because I, I, you know, you have to put the condom on and I don't like condoms particularly. So who does? There isn't a guy in the world who likes condoms. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, but so, uh, did you ever meet a guy who said, "You know, the thing I like best about sex is putting <laughs> is putting on the condom." Boy, that's really hot. That makes me hot when I think about it. Anyway, so uh, I, um, uh, uh, you know, so I I did it, and I w went out and I went, okay, well, that was I don't know, a hundred bucks wasted. Right. You know, I, you know, so I, so I shot my load I can do that on my own you know so I, it, it just never appealed to me that uh, did, did you find it sexy when you did it no it was you, actually it was very, it was very empty <laughs> like you said it was something to do and uh, then you and, and you do you do feel remorse after you're through because when, while you're going through the process you're horny and so you're willing to pay the money but after you have an orgasm, you go, what did I just do? You know, yeah. because all the desire has been drained from you, and you're not going, boy, was that a wonderful experience. No, you're just going, well, yeah, uh, I'm going to feel better for a couple hours, and I'm going to be horny again. You know, what do I do? Come back and spend another, you know, 100 bucks or 200 bucks or... I think it's something like three, four hundred dollars now. At these I days. think it's really expensive now, and I, uh, I think Hoff, uh, I think he just won. He ran for some office up there, and he won. Oh, did he win? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I think it was like county. Right, it was some local thing, but he won. So. Yeah, but he's the only thing in the county, so he just had to go vote for himself, and he won. <laughs> he did over ninety percent in the hooker vote. <laughs> Yeah, right. If if some of them were had become residents as a result of being at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, he was a shoe in. <laughs> you know, but he also came out for Trump during the election, and I haven't talked to him since then, and haven't had a desire to because he voted for Trump. You know, because that does separate us as people. You know, it is separating everyone. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he's a libertarian. Probably I mean, you voted for Trump. 
you know, so one of these days I'll talk to uh, Hoff again and I'll say, why the fuck did you vote for Trump? You know, why did you feel that was a good idea? Uh, but uh, yeah, Give him a call. But, hey, you know, but uh, speaking of hookers, our president goes to them. Apparently, yeah. He must, he must be going through hell right now because if he's still horny a lot, he can't act on it. Because if he goes to some whorehouse somewhere, they're all going to know who he is. You know, he can't put on a Make America Great Again cap and think he's in disguise. (laughs) And we all know he isn't fucking Melania. Or more more particularly, she isn't fucking him. That could be, yeah. I mean, would you want to? (laughs) I mean, the so what, she just got in for the money. Yeah, the only thing made him ever attractive was the fact that he was rich. And in the early days, I guess he kind of wasn't a bad-looking guy. You know, if you had to hang out with a guy with a billion dollars, I guess he was acceptable. But now, that man's a train wreck. Well, I, who, would you have a... I don't know. My sex drive pretty much died years ago, so I can't imagine in the 70s. My, it'd be. my sex drive is gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as you get older, uh, uh, as I describe it, you start getting your dignity back. Yeah. You know, uh, because... The uh, male sex drive is a curse. Oh, I mean, uh, it, just, it, uh, it, it was my curse. All the time it was my curse. You know, I mean, because uh, it, it, it drove me to make... Hasty decisions. Bad decisions is constantly chasing women. And yeah, and today, uh, I'm sorry, you don't chase women anymore. No. Uh, not if you're not if you're in the public eye. You know, if you're some car mechanic and you want to pat a woman on the ass, nobody's gonna. You know, Me Too movement isn't saying don't go. Yeah, if you're famous, you're doomed. If you're famous, and that, that's where the where where the um, where I guess the discrimination is. Is that is it's a discrimination against people who are famous, and not against people who aren't famous. Because as I say, if you if you're a, a you know a car mechanic, who's gonna the Me Too movement's gonna go? Oh, that's so and so, yeah, and then they're gonna say at the at the uh, garage, oh, you'll never work here again. Yeah, it's ridic- yeah. ridiculous. So it really is a discrimination against uh, against the the well known. And, and they never go after people who aren't well known because that's not going to get them the publicity. They're not saying, you know, Bob the barber, boy, that guy makes a pass at every woman who comes in the place. <laughs> boy, did he make me feel uncomfortable. Never go to Bob the barber again. You never see that. That hasn't made the Me Too blacklist. No. You know? But if you're famous, you're tried on Twitter, and uh, you're done. Yeah, and you and and you're not tried in a court of law, so no. nobody's ever proved anything. And uh, you know, I mean, I it's not like I feel sorry for some of these people who have been accused. You know, am I going to feel sorry for Harvey Weinstein? But I do think that he's being unjustly uh, targeted. Uh, mainly because, yes, he probably did all those things. But until it's proven in a court of law, you know, he shouldn't lose any work or uh, have people, you know, not want to do business. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so it's just the mere accusation that can ruin your career. And I, oh, I yeah. always like to point at Louis C.K. I mean, what the fuck did Louis C.K. do? You know? Well, the accusation is now a conviction. So. The accusation is now a conviction, absolutely. So, uh, it, it, you know, yeah. Oh, oh yes, folks, uh, women out there are going, well, he, he pulled his penis out and started jerking off in front of three women. Yeah, but he asked permission first. He's a real gentleman. <laughs> no, but he, he asked permission first, and what I'm saying is, why didn't somebody in this group go, why? Because he's so well-known and everything, he was using his, his fame to cow you into this? No, there are three women there. One of them at least should have said, well, I'm leaving, you know? None of yeah. them left. They stand there and stood there and watched while he did it. And this man now 
it lost all his his shows on FX, and uh, you know it's, it can't get work in movies or anything. Why? Plus, Louis a nice guy. So, well, what the hell? You just can't you just can't be funny anymore. <laughs> I mean, there was a time when uh, saying, "Do you mind if I pull out my penis and jerk off?" was funny. It was just pull- <laughs> it was just pulling your penis out and jerking off that was the the bad part about it, you know. <laughs> exactly. Simply asking, ha ha ha. Okay, on to other stuff. Anyway, hey, listen, we've uh, we've run out of time. We have, ladies and gentlemen. That is the lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown, who we'll talk to again next week. We will. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Larry. Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Here we go, here we go, here we... What, what the hell happened to my camera? It moved. You don't want that. Hold on a second, folks. I gotta fix this. Hmm. How did it move? Hmm. There we go. There we go. A little bit more. Uh, oh boy. I can't. I gotta fix it, folks. I can't. I haven't got it right. Hmm. Well, that's really fun. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on a second. This thing is very hard to adjust. Uh, it, uh, there we go. And up a little bit more. Uh, there we go. I guess that's about the best we can do. Let me see here. What I can do something else here. Ah, oh boy, I hate this. Just hate this. Configure window. And let me see here. Uh, we want to tilt it up. Up, up, up. No, down, down, up. Okay. And then over. Pan it over that way. There we go. And then we turn on the light. Ta-da! Okay. Jeez almighty. This is ridiculous. Anyway, where are my earphones? Uh, hello, everybody. Let me just go apply and okay and all right. And uh, I think we've we've got uh, this at least will work for tonight. Hello there. How are you? Um, nothing like being unprepared to do the program, right? Okay. Anyway, so here we go. Anyway, we're um, we're on the air. Uh, we're ready to go. Uh, we had bubbles. I hope you enjoyed him. Uh, and now it's time to go to the citizens panel. Let me see here. I was doing a lot of stuff. I was actually doing some prep for the show tonight while the while Bubs was talking. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's why I kind of am. It's not that I'm late, but that I'm I'm a little not prepared, as it were. Here we go. Let's go online. All right, so people can now call us if they so desire to. Uh, and we would love to hear from you. Um, Skype keeps asking me, do you want the latest version? It's ready to install now. No, I don't. Why don't you give me a little thing that says, please don't show me this sign again. Okay. No, but they're not going to do that. Right. Anyway, so we're getting all ready. I should have done all this earlier, right? Huh, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. Uh, the only thing is, this is my lamp here. That's in the shot. Uh, and I don't know how much I want it in the shot, but there it is. Anyway. So, uh, welcome to the program. Uh, and uh, there's a lot to talk about today. Uh, things just get worse for Donald Trump each and every single day. And uh, I, I, I know that it will be, the, the whole ruse will be over when I get um, our dear friend, uh, Phil Meyer, 
to call and say, okay, I give up on Trump. I have to admit he's a dunce, you know. And it isn't that he's a dunce. He's, he, it, it, well, from what we're hearing coming out of the White House, and now there is another senior official uh, who has written a op-ed page, an op-ed article in the New York Times, which I will read some of later once we have Phil on here because I want to get his reaction to it because I doubt if he's read it. He's probably heard about it. He's probably heard what Trump had to say about it, but I don't think that Phil probably has read the damn thing. So now all I have to do is wait for Phil. Oh, by the way, Phil, I opened up the box and the, uh, the board is sitting over here. He sent me, uh, you know, Phil is a pretty nice guy. He sends me all his cast-offs. And in this particular case, he sent me uh, his old uh, control board, which is a Behringer. And it's really, it's, a, it's nice, but it's very big. And while it would fit, just fit here, uh, I have to have this thing to help operate the show. And that would not fit here. <laughs> so I have to figure out how I would use it. But I'm going to play around with it in another room and see if I can get it working and so on. Anyway, our Skype lines are open, and I'm waiting for the first call of this evening. Who knows when that will come? Uh, you know, I pray for the day that nobody calls and I can just call it quits and go home. Now, here's the latest thing that's happened with me. Uh, I, you know, I've been telling you about this Mac Mini that I bought from Phil for, for 300 bucks, which is a good bargain because of the $1,300, $1,400 mini, Mac Mini. Uh, and, and then I just had to have it fixed uh, because it blew, and I have a new logic board put in for about $400. Okay? So I get it home, and last night after the show, I'm playing with it, and I suddenly realize the main hard drive is too small. And I realize that what it is is these are what they call, um, uh, what do you call it, drives, fusion drives. And what they are is they have a, uh, a flash memory element for like startup of the machine and for certain things that you do on a regular basis. And then the hard drive, which is a terabyte in size. And I look at that and I see that the size I'm getting out of that drive is only uh, 120 gigs. And I suddenly realized somebody either forgot to put in the drive or hook up the drive, so I have to take it back to Apple. So I call Apple up and I say, look, this is what happened. And they said, well, just come on down and uh, we'll, uh, we'll take it in and fix it. And I said, okay. So I, I take a cab down there and it's like at nine o'clock in the morning. I haven't gotten enough sleep. I took a Xanax last night to put me to sleep. In the middle of the night, I had leg cramps. Oh, God. It was just horrible. Anyway, I get down there, and the guy, the dunce who, who was there to greet people goes, well, uh, the first time we can see you is an hour and a half from now. And I went, then why was I told to bring this down? And they'd immediately take it in to, re to actually what it is. They're not supposed to repair it. They're supposed to fix their repair. All right? And uh, uh, I, you know, what I find is if you get annoying enough, they'll get frustrated and turn you over to somebody else who can do something about it. So he says, well, let me get my manager. The manager comes along and I tell him my problem. I said, I, I, had the, I bought, brought this home yesterday. You guys fixed it, but the fact is that uh, the hard drive isn't working in it and all I'm getting is the, is the uh, solid state drive. And he said, well, that, we'll have somebody look at it. And they brought somebody out, and he looked at it, and he said, and they did this all pretty fast. But only because I complained. If I just said, well, I'll wait an hour and a half, and I'll come back in an hour and a half with my stuff, geez almighty. You know, th these people are no great geniuses, all right, at the so-called genius bar. Well, this wasn't a genius bar guy. This was a guy, you know, that you go to and say what you want. So anyway, uh, I, I, I gave them the machine, and now they're supposed to look at it and see what's wrong. Um, they, they said that when it was brought in, the hard drive was working. Uh, so when they did some diagnostic tests and so on. So it isn't the hard drive being blown. 
but it's the fact they probably didn't plug the thing into the right plug in order to uh, to get the uh, to mount the, uh, for the hard drive to mount because it's just not mounting. So, but I, that's what I've been. That's what I was doing at uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Right, I'm very tired and not of any uh, in any great shape. So, anyway, is anybody out there? Uh, is anybody going to call me? Is this uh, going to be the way it's going to be tonight? Okay. All right. Well. You know, uh, so anyway, after it, last night when this all happened, uh, I just, it, to begin with, it made it very difficult for me to get to sleep. Um, it made it very difficult for me to get to sleep. And um, uh, I was just lying there thinking, you know, I'm thinking very seriously about just not using tech anymore. Because all it does is break down, and then it's one crisis after another. The running of this place. Oh, by the way, look. Am I going to put up with this? This is a. Uh, that's nobody. That's what it looks like when nobody's calling. Okay, that's what it looks like when nobody calls. All right. Okay. So did I make you feel guilty? So you start calling. Okay. I mean the lines are open, and I know they're open. But anyway. I started thinking about it, and I started going, I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I just don't want to have anything to do with tech anymore. It's just getting too frustrating. There's always something breaking down. There's always something to fix. There's always somebody I have to yell at. There's always some agenda I have to have. And then I only do it uh, so that I can come on here and sit here for 15 minutes waiting for somebody to call. Now, last night we had a, f what a, not only a full house, we have what we call a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a royal flush. Uh, and it was uh, good, you know. Um, uh, and we had a lot of people. But right now, oh, well, wait a minute. Uh, here she is. Uh, here, here comes Renee. At least, I, at least Renee comes through in a clutch, right? <laughs> so, hey, you were talking about giving up tech, but in four days, Apple's having its meeting. What do you mean they're Apple's having its meeting? They have their fall meeting on September 9th. So all of the software that we heard about back in March or May, they didn't give us any hardware information. So we're all hoping that this meeting starting on the 9th, I think it is. In and, and what is it exactly I'm going to buy? I don't know. I have an Apple Watch. I have an iPhone. I have one, two, three, uh, let's see here, three, four, Max. Okay, so what do you expect me to do? Buy well, more you know of this shit to make them rich? <laughs> so they're coming so they're coming out with they think they're coming out with the bigger ten, but for all the parents out there, they're what coming mean, what out. Do mean, what do you mean the bigger ten? Uh, bigger yeah yeah uh like this isn't big enough right it's not you know compared it, to the rest it's yeah, not uh, oh, oh. don't you have fat thumbs like the rest oh, of us by the way this looks smaller than it is you know why why because the, the bed black no the bezel is small is is thinner. and it doesn't crack either this is the same size as the <laughs> plus uh, as the uh, iphone uh six and seven plus okay all right but um, so they're going to come out with a bigger screen. I mean, come on, this is this is fine. I mean, what do I need with the, uh, another? Well, if, if they get the screens any bigger, I may as well buy a mini Mac, uh, not a mini Mac, but a mini uh, 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 iPad. iPad. Yeah, I mean, so it's going to be it's going to be six point three inches, and if I'm not mistaken, I think the mini iPad is seven inches. <laughs> yeah, that's probably yeah. true. I have to look that one up. That's a yeah. very good point. Yeah. But I didn't like my mini iPad. It was just so in between what I needed. It was irritating you to know, me. It but looks like that's what they use over at the I iPhone store. I mean, at oh. the Apple store. I mean, just for their, you know, taking people in and out and so on. Because they're probably a little lighter and smaller and, you know. You probably uh, have plenty of them. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah, true. And the exciting thing about parents is that they're launching a new version of their cheap iPhone or their cheap phone, which is called an SE. Mm -hmm. And so they they haven't updated that for many years. So there's a lot of parents that are going to be kind of excited about that. And Alex, is your watch a three? Yeah, it's three. Yeah, I, I dropped my watch face first. Maybe on the it's tile a two. Maybe, the maybe, maybe it's a two. I don't know. It's well, a, if it's a two, then you wouldn't be able to make phone calls on it. If it's a no, three, no, 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 it's a three. No, you can only make phone calls on it if you get the one that has uh, has uh, uh, you know phone. A f phone thing in it. That's three. Well, no, it's not three. It's it's the three with uh, with uh, Wi-Fi and with, cellular. It, with Wi-Fi and cellular. But here's right. the thing. Here's the thing. I, and I was down there, and I was thinking about it today, and I had the m cash in my pocket to buy one, to buy one of those, and I went, why? To begin with, the iPhone, uh, the I Apple Watch works in conjunction with your iPhone and it has to be in proximity of the iPhone in order to work. Not right. true for the three. Well, wait a minute, let me finish, I know that. Okay. So the question is, whenever I leave the house, I've got my iPhone with me, don't you? No, why? You leave it home on purpose? If I'm going out to exercise or walk the dog or anything along mm. those lines, let's just say I'm getting out of my car you, you, just you, to you know, run you, into you, the grocery you, store. You, you can take a phone call on your iPhone, on your uh, what? Apple Watch, even, right. even if you don't have that the service on it, because it come, it it uses this as its base. All right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody using your Apple I Watch? watch. <laughs> Now, the only thing good about it is it does have Bluetooth, and if you have Bluetooth earphones on, you can hear somebody. Now, it I've been great. saying to myself over and over again, I have no reason to buy it because would I ever leave the house without my Apple phone? And if I'm not leaving my home without my Apple phone, then the Apple Watch is going to work, right? Today, I go to work out and I forget my phone, and now I've got nothing to watch and nothing to listen to. Which, and if, if I had bought that watch today when I was at the Apple store, mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't have any problem. But you got to pay ten bucks more a month to your phone company too. Right, but let's see what they, you've got four days or something like that. Let's see what they're coming out with. I mean, if it's because, a slightly better Apple Watch, uh, you know, then well, uh, then, I'll, then I may I may think about it. Uh, there's two things that they're talking about. One is they're talking about a more glass wrapped face more like the phones and less like the watch used to be and then the other people are talking about either circular look to it or a way to well, broadcast i think samsung has a circular now which is your normal watch configuration most watches are circular they're not square like that right and i think that the, a round one would appeal especially to women far more because when I bought the girlfriend her, her her Apple Watch, I bought her the smaller one because the big one just looked too klutzy on her. You know? oh, well, the small one isn't that small in the first place. Uh, yeah, it's not that small. But at least it looks a little more dainty, shall we say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she's tiny. So yeah, yeah, she got I a tiny wrist that. and all of that. Uh, yeah. but, but what I'm saying is that they're supposed to come out maybe with a new Mac Mini. You know, which at last a new Mac Mini for them to follow up and repair. You know, so uh, man, I'm telling you, I, it, it, you think you take it to Apple and they'll fix it, right? I bring it back and and somehow the the hard drive isn't working. They didn't mount it. It wasn't plugged in or something. And now I got to wait for it for another couple of days. I mean, it's just. I'd be surprised if they kept it more than 24 hours. Oh, well, uh, I haven't heard from them yet, you know. Yeah, you just took that down earlier today. I took it at the beginning of the day. I should have heard from them by the end of the day. But, you know, yeah. I mean, fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> you know. So if they're bringing out a new um, iMac Mini... Or an, so here is the deal. Well, this now, is how iMac, I by the way, I, I've said this yes. before, and I'll say this again. The worst thing you can buy that they put out is an iMac. And the, and the reason is, if they made that hard drive easily replaceable, almost user replaceable, that would be fine. 
But I've gone online to say, how do you change a hard drive on an iMac? You have to have a degree from MIT to do the fucking thing, <laughs> even if you have step-by-step -step instructions. And then you have a great, the only thing I ever put, the, the only thing I ever put in my iMac, I was able to replace the power supply because it's right in the bottom. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you, don't buy an iMac. Buy yourself a mini Mac, or a Mac Mini, where, so they can follow it up in, in repair, and then just get yourself a monitor you like, okay, and you're fine. You know, you've got just as almost just as much power if you buy a major size one as as you've got in the in the um, in the iMac. Uh, who needs the iMac? It's just, it's not that re repairable. Neither is, neither is the Mac Mini, but at least it sure. doesn't cost like this thing cost me 2,500 bucks. You know. Yeah. Well, the iMac is the other thing that they're going to announce. They think they're going to announce, or we think they're going to yeah, announce. Yeah, but they keep upgrading that all the time. They haven't changed the Mac Mini in four years, something like that. Very true. And they haven't changed, there's something else they haven't changed in about four years. So, you know. We're talking to two people who couldn't care less. Sorry, guys. My, my question is, why do you want to change the hard drive in your iMac? Well, <laughs> yeah. no, well here's a good reason why. Uh, okay. uh, this thing is a 2009. You don't think that hard drive is coming close to failing? Mine's 2007. It works great. Really? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I had to re, I had to reformat hers and everything and, and redo it to get it working right again. I but, might have had to do that once, but yeah. But all I'm saying is, okay, so you got a 2007. Let's say the hard drive goes bad. And it, it, we know hard drives go bad, right? Well, let's just say for grins it goes bad. Yeah. Uh, it's a 2007. Are you going to take it in and spend like $300 to have it repaired? No. I'll buy a new one. Oh, okay. But what do you have now when you're through? You've got basically a screen which a display which is kind of difficult to use as a separate display wait hang on a second this is where i got caught i can't use my 2012 imac desktop as a what is it called a not a bypass monitor but an extension yeah, it, you, you can link you're supposed to be able to link it through a wire and get it to slave maybe Right. Know. So uh, it has to have two Thunderbolt connections in order to actually do that. And this particular uh, 2012 only has one. So even when this thing gets repaired, if I decide to repair it, I still can't use it as a dummy, as an extra monitor, because it didn't have the two Thunderbolt ports. And I think the two All Thunderbolt ports... All I'm saying ports... is, wouldn't it have been nice if Apple had just put a plug in there that goes, hey... This is the input, uh, flip this switch or whatever, and you can use it as a second monitor. But no, this thing goes out, I've got a 27 inch brick. And I'm not gonna go spend money to replace the hard drive in it. That's putting good money after bad. This thing is, is almost 10 years old. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I just think iMacs are a bad idea. You know, well, it's really nice for somebody who wants it all in one place and in your hand. But then when it breaks down, you, you're fucked. And then you got to go down to the Apple store and deal with those fucking geniuses who can't even uh, get you up and running with a hard drive going. They, they I, figured I, that I, since the, the solid state drive was working, uh, I had some kind of, uh, uh, you know, some kind of uh, uh, data thing. Uh, when I went on, I had to res I had to reset up my machine all again, and I figured, ah, they erased the hard drive, and then I realized after a while what I was doing was I was programming the 120 gigabyte SSD in their solid state drive, and that they somehow hadn't hooked up or mounted my hard drive because it should have just booted up the way it was always was before I got it fixed. But no, the genius is there. Yeah, yeah, I love Steve Jobs for that. So another thing that my iPhone does, and I know your i excuse me, your iWatch does this too, is it allows me to participate in the Apple Heart Study. Well, fuck them. I don't want them to know what's going on with my heart. <laughs> you don't want them collecting data, so in the future they might be able to use that to help somebody 
like Jeff or Marty or somebody else with heart problems. My, live my heart isn't going to help Jeff. Je my, Jeff's ticker. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Je Jeff's ticker. Jeff's ticker is uh, well taken care of. He doesn't need me. Hospital. Come on. Yeah. He doesn't okay. need. He doesn't need me. More doctors that you know. Yeah. <laughs> Checking on yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, uh, 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 it's uh, I, I, you know, he he he's a study in and of himself, and he doesn't need to be on the Apple program to be able to be a benefit to science. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Jeff. His doctors are trying to figure out how he's still alive. That's that's right. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's actually they're working very hard. Well, I'm glad he is because then I would have never gotten to know him, and I like him. <clears> so you know. <laughs> but then again, that's somebody else I have to worry about. Like, where's Phil tonight? Did he have a heart attack? He didn't. <laughs> he didn't say it was going to be a Phil-free night. And every He's time perfectly... he doesn't call, I go to. Did he have a stroke? Because he's we're... perfectly <laughs> rotor rooted. There's no way he's going to have a heart attack now. You don't know. Well, they checked right, all right, of the valves. Right, Jeff? Am I right? You don't know that these doctors aren't like the repair people at Apple. <laughs> They've got to hook up something. You know, oh they forgot to God. hook something up when it was through. So please call. He's already got you in the morgue, or at least on the table. <laughs> well, you know, and, 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 and I worry about Phil that way because, you know, I don't think Faye would call me and say he's dead. <laughs> you know. He's gonna have to leave a post it now. So you know what I'm doing right now? Oh. I'm I'm rolling my foot on a golf ball. Oh, PT. I know what that's about. You know what that's about? What's it about? You've got your your foot is painful. And this little ball is getting to stretch. Mm -hmm. Your foot in the right place, and theoretically, it'll go back to be a, a normal foot. Well, you see, I have this numbness in my I have this numbness in my feet, <clears throat> and I was worried that, and I then the feet themselves started hurting in my shoes a lot, and so I figured one had to do with the other. But it turns out that my physical therapist supposed. That what was wrong was my. He says you've got plantar fasciitis or plantar whatever, fasciitis. you know, and and your feet are a little on the flat side. That's what's causing the problem. So take this golf ball five minutes a day, <laughs> play with and, it, play, and you know something. My feet are feeling much better, even even this the whole toe situation. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that that that's kind of a way of solving the problem. But I'm now I'm just going to cost me a fortune in golf balls, you know. So. <laughs> Uh, Why? I don't You're know. Throw them out the window. Uh, <laughs> Get them out. The window. Not just the golf ball. I'm side, glad. I'm it? glad we don't have a cat full time because a cat would d take them and put them places where we couldn't and find them. Bath. So what our cat used to do, if you get a long enough hallway, yeah. is those plastic rings that come from the milk cans. You put that down, and they'll bat it all the way down the hallway yeah. and back up. But last night I had a, I had cramp, a real horrible cramps in my ankles while I was sleeping. Just, you know. Had had you done this prior to going to bed? What? Played with your golf ball? No. Yes. But okay. no, no, but that didn't. That's not what caused it. I think what's causing my leg cramps, and they go away when I use magnesium, enough magnesium. Oh. Okay. Good. Uh, but. Uh, what I think the problem was with the with the uh, 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 with with my legs, uh, with my cramping, is my diet. Uh, this uh, low carb can cause cramps, so mm -hmm. I take magnesium, okay. and I guess I didn't take enough. Less. Last night I woke up in the middle of the worst cramps I've ever had in my ankles, but I haven't had cramps for a month or so. So I don't know. Hello, Patrick. How are you? We look alike now because I went and got a haircut today. Jesus. <laughs> 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 I can't see. It's like looking at the sun. <laughs> Two of them. Let me, let, me get, let me get out of the way of, uh, of Patrick here so we can get him full picture. There we go. Oh, my. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. No, so I'm thinking. Huh? 
looking for my sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I went. Uh, so I well, I went and got a haircut today. Uh, uh, How much did they charge you? Oh, this was uh, this is my big uh, my big haircut. This is uh, costing. Uh, let me see here. How much did it cost? Uh, One hundred and twenty-five bucks every four weeks. What do you want? No, no. This was uh, mine. I hate to say it, but uh, I, I, it's better. Than, it's very good. Twelve bucks. You know, better for my hair. Oh, look at that badass ponytail no, and wrap around. <laughs> My haircuts are free. Oh, see? Oh, that's your mom. It, it would, it, my mom, and then when I was with my ex, she would do it, or the kids would do it. Just take the clippers. Can't fuck it up. <laughs> like that. I mean, you can put the gun on it for the, for the height you wanted, and you can't screw it up. So. Well, uh, here, no, but here's the thing. I would, uh, Scott, I, I, I know that I could probably get myself some hair clippers, and for what I've got here, okay, uh, Marjorie could do it for me, all right, you know, without any big deal, okay. But, but, uh, I like going to the barber. Now, I I go to a barber here in Harlem. Do you ever see the show Movie Barber Shop? Mm-hmm. Well, take that, and then bring it down about ten notches, and you've got my barber shop. <laughs> And, and yet, it becomes a rallying place for the neighborhood. We have another one up here that is, all the time, it's full. But not with people getting haircuts, but people just socializing with each other. Hanging out. Yeah, hanging out. But I went in there once, and I just felt out of place because I was white. It was like, you know, I, I, I felt like they were looking at me like I was a cultural phenomenon or something. So you felt uncomfortable, but did you stay to maybe work through that uncomfortableness or well, did I, you I, bail? Well, I didn't feel uncomfortable because I was, uh, because the, you know, I was a white guy in a black place. I felt uncomfortable be because they really You're didn't interact with me that much. You know, no. it, it was you didn't like, know them. They didn't know you. It was your first time. Yeah. Well, anyway, I went to this other one, which is not as social, not as many people there, but it's still the same kind of shop. You know, they just hang out there and talk to each other. And, you know, but the, the guy does a nice, decent enough job. I mean, what can you do with this? OK, you can't really fuck this up. And when it grows out to, and the problem is, is that a really good haircut will grow out better than a bad haircut will grow out. So this doesn't grow out very good. So when it gets long enough, another 12 bucks, I have them shave it off. Big deal. I was going to make a Trump joke, but I couldn't get one out. Yeah. I, I, I'm wondering what happened to Phil tonight, because I really wanted to read a little bit of this op-ed in the New York Times. I read it, too, and I, I read it twice. And the first time I read it, I was really off put by the statement about we're to the left but we're not to the left where we were going to obstruct you or something like that and i'm like who the fuck says that well uh, who, who says, says that? that who says that is a basic right winger like the guy who wrote the op-ed piece and that's i felt that that statement in and of itself made him more creditable because no, I, no it made well, it, it, he knew who you were. It, no, it, it made him more creditable because he wasn't sitting around saying, "Hey, I'm some lefty writing this. I'm a guy who who, who who's been drinking the Kool Aid all these years, but I can't drink this swill." <laughs> you know, uh, yes, Patrick. When I read it, I, I only read it once because I just really had no interest in reading it again. Um, I. What I took away from it is, and maybe it's just because I'm a cynical bastard. Yeah. I it, the way I read it is it was feeding some um, some food to the left so that they get something and feel better about it, and it's not an actual real. Thing. That if more of a made up, I mean, there might be some hints mm -hmm. of realism in there, just enough, but I think it's throwing meat to the left so that they can maybe think, oh, there's somebody in there that's on our side, 
And no, I, 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 I don't think that's the way it came off, Patrick. I mean, it's I, the way it came I, off. I'm with Patrick. I, I, I read it and I went, eh. It sounds to me like somebody throwing meat to try to satisfy some people on the left, and that was it. Or even some uh, um, never Trumpers on the right, you know, just. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't take it as a serious piece. I looked at it, I read it, and I thought this is somebody that is trying to placate in some way. I and did, that, I, that was, I, I I didn't feel that. What I felt was that this is somebody who, for one reason or another, is angry, and he's angry. I think because he sees how dangerous this man can be and how they've had to keep him in check. And that he wanted America to know that if you're worried, there are people in the White House who are keeping him in check. There are people who are not giving in to his whims, as it were. Uh, now, yeah. the thing that Trump complained about was that this was an anonymous op-ed, right? And how can you believe somebody who's anonymous? Well, the Times does because the Times knows who this anonymous contributor is. They say in the very beginning, we know who he is. He just doesn't want to be named because he doesn't want to lose his job. So the Times is kind of doing due diligence in that they know who it is, so they know the credibility of what he's saying or not saying. Now, from there, you can take on what you feel he's trying to do. Could this have been a planted thing by Trump, for instance? I wouldn't go that far. I, I think it's somebody that, I, I, and I'm, I'm very serious when I say it. I, I think it, it's throwing meat to the wolves, that being the left, to, and people on the right that hate Trump, to give them something to... to cheer about and say, oh, yay, there's somebody, you know, planted in in the no, White it's, House. It's, it, I, don't, I, I didn't go yay for that reason. I, did, I just read it out of interest as a fly on the wall, you know. Um, let me, just, let me just read a few things here for the audience so they know what we're talking about. It says, the dilemma, which he does not fully grasp, is that many of senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. Um, I would know I'm one of them. Uh, now, here's, here's what you didn't like, uh, uh, Renee. To be clear, ours is not the popular resistance of the left. We want the administration to succeed and think many of its policies have already made America safer and more prosperous. We there believe, was the statement. <laughs> huh? Go ahead. Well, I mean, Sorry. but, but he, he, didn't, he didn't talk about the resistance. He called them the resistance. He didn't call them obstructionist. He didn't, you know. Right, but we're, we, we don't want Trump to fail. Mm -hmm. We don't want America to disintegrate into the shit that hole that it's going to disintegrate into. And the fact that he said it that way means that he thinks that there's a bunch of us out there that actually think that way. On the contrary, we don't want old people dying without health okay, care. Okay, okay, okay. We don't we, want we, people we, we, losing we, their health care. Look, you're, you're speaking to the converted here. Don't shout. You don't have to make a speech. Uh, it's not necessary. Uh, except for Patrick. You haven't got him convinced. But Patrick is copacetic, you know. Anyway, uh, it, he goes on to say, uh, uh, that's why many Trump appointees have vowed to... Uh, to do what we can do to preserve our democratic institutions while thwarting Mr. Trump's more misguided impulses until he is out of office. The root of the problem is the president's amorality. Anyone who works with him knows he's not moored to any discernible first principles that guide his decision making. Now, that I think is an interesting comment. Although he was elected a Republican, the president shows little affinity for the ideals long espoused by conservatives, free minds, free markets, and free people. At best, he has invoked these ideals in scripted setting. At worst, he's attacked them outright. In addition to his mass marketing of the notion that the press is the enemy of the people, President Trump's impulses are generally anti-trade and anti-democratic. 
Don't get me wrong, there are bright spots uh, that the near ceaseless negative coverage of the administration fails to capture, effective deregulation, historic tax reform, and the more robust military and more. Now, he, here, uh, that's the reason why you, you dislike him and why I would dislike him, because he, he believes in deregulation and things like that. But still, I would rather hear this from somebody who politically I disagree with and is still giving me the message of what's going on inside. So what is it that bothers you again, Patrick, that you just think he's playing to the... Yeah, yeah. I, I think that he's just trying. How do we do guys. that? Rock. And when I say you guys, Rock. Not a, Rock. that's not a racial pejorative. Rock. Because everybody here is white. Um, I just think he, he's trying to placate to the left and um and and you and it's written so well Alex just did your saying that he, he writes it as if I was gonna write it so that it sounds genuine coming from me on the right with just enough sprinkles in there for people on the left to say you know what he might be a righty but he's the type of righty that I could deal. Oh, no, I couldn't deal. I wouldn't want this guy to be president with his politics. I wouldn't want him to be in any, any public position near me uh, because of his position. But I think the stuff he talks about like this, meetings with him veer off topic and off the rails. He engages in repetitive rants, and his impulsiveness results in half-baked, ill-informed, and occasionally reckless decisions that have to be walked back. Now, when I read that, I don't go yay. I'm frightened. Yeah. I am frightened. Well, what do you think John Kelly's been doing for eight for two years? We, John we, Kelly has been fighting these fires. Do, do you do any of you think this might have been written by John Kelly? Oh yeah, no, I no. don't think so. No? Mm -hmm. Who do you think it was? Anybody we know? Well wait a minute. Wait, 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 yeah, wait, yeah. You're holding that, it up. That's Lawrence McDonald's uh or O'Donnell's uh, right. opinion. What? Who is it? Coates. Coates. Dan Coates. Dan Coates. National Security oh, guy. Advisor. What? Seventy-year-old guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't care. He, he doesn't need the money. Yeah. Uh, Patrick. All of the words that you just read are all of the same words that I read in my news feed constantly from my friends on the left. Off the rails. Mm -hmm. uh, that whole paragraph. Mm -hmm. All we doing is the same thing that I do when I apply for a job, Alex. I read the job description, and then I parrot back all of the main words and points that they want to hear. So mm -hmm. if the job says uh, advertising and billboards and this and that and that, and I've done that, I'm going to add that in there. All you're doing is parroting back what people want to hear. To make them feel comfortable. Have, have you ever heard one of his speeches? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever listened to his speeches? I'm not talking about Try to listen with your ears, okay? He's not, he's, she's not, he's not talking about he's Trump. He talks all the time. He's not talking about Trump. He's talking about the guy who wrote the freaking op-ed. No, well, he's talking no, about no. what Trump is in, in a no, meeting. But what he's saying, okay, what he, wait, 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 hold, hold on a second. Yes, uh, Patrick. Okay. All right, get chill out for a minute. Uh, what, what I love, you know what I love is that when you when you wanted to talk because he was going on a rant, you made your hand bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you made your hand bigger. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're not listening. Okay, I got, okay. I'm wait a minute. Go, wait a minute. Listen Alex, to Patrick. Leave right now no, because no, no, don't, I don't, don't want to finish off Patrick. No, okay? no, no, don't, 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 don't stay there. Stay, stay there. there. Stay there. Stay there. You cannot talk. Two fucking idiots anymore. So yeah. I'm just gonna go so he no, can grab. No, wait a minute. Oh boy. <gasps> oh my God! What happened? Get back here, Scott. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, what I what uh, yeah. I was saying is, Scott is right. When and I was gonna <laughs> tell him that. If you watch the the rallies and that, I mean, I don't because I don't care to, but. Yes, you, he goes off topic, he does that. My point was, all of my left friends that write about various things, whether it'll be the last rally he did, they will use the word off the rails, off topic. That was my point. But could it Not, be, I, could it be I, Patrick, 
could it be they're using these terms because of the they're the apt description of what's going on? No, 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 no. There are dog whistles. There are yeah. dog whistles, right? Is that what Patrick's trying to say? And I think that's what Scott missed from me is all this whoever wrote this is doing is using the same word that you guys use when you describe it. So you recognize yourself in the piece. And that was my point about when I apply for a job, I read the description, I look for the key word that they want to hear, and that's what I put in. So that when they read it, they're reading themselves and they're going, oh, yeah, and that's what I thought in. Well, I, I, listen, wanted. listen, let, let me say this, Patrick, and, and this is why I maybe disagree with you about this particular thing, which I think is slightly different. Uh, I'm always very suspicious of anybody to the right or to the left who tells me what I th they think I want to hear, okay? And I don't like them for that. I feel like, you know, they're tickling my balls because they think it'll make me feel good, right? Yeah. Don't fucking do that when I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I just followed as soon as you said tickle my balls. <laughs> Uh, but, I, I actually but wait agree a minute, with wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. I'm one of those people who is, is very suspicious of that. And I don't feel this is necessarily pandering. I just, to begin with, I want to know, I'd like to know what the guy's motivation is. You know, is, is he upset with Trump? Is he pissed at Trump? Is he trying to get even with Trump? You know, there's some motivation here that... While we, you know, we, we, I don't think knowing who it is, I think it's just important that the New York Times does and gives him, realizes he's a credible uh, 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 person. Uh, but uh, what I want to know is his motivation. And I, I don't get a sense of what his motivation is in this. What is it in for him? What's in it for him? To, to report this to the New York Times. Is it that he suddenly had a fit of, of, uh, of guilt, <coughs> guilt, you know, in which case, okay, you know, I understand. Anyway, Why are we assuming it's a him? Uh, I'm going to assume it's a him because that's really the people that Trump surrounds himself with. You know, is it Kellyanne Conway? Don't think so. Yeah, but this might be a staffer we don't know. So you're assuming well, again. If, if, the, if this is a staffer. I mean, there's it, it, millions a, of them. A simple staffer would probably not have access to the president in quite the way that he could make these statements. By the way, mm -hmm. we need more callers if you're out there because, Scott, come back. Scott, get your Scott, boniker back here. Scott, yeah, get your boniker back here, Scott. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Scott. And, we'll, and we will let you rant about him because you are completely correct. And so that rant is well justified. And, and so, but yeah. I thought Patrick was talking about the guy who, the person who wrote it. But see, I agree with Patrick. It's, it, it, it is, I thought when, after I read it, that it was a dog whistle to us. I took that piece of paper, it stroked my ego, it yeah, danced but, but, around but my so does But so does everybody on MSNBC. So does Rachel Maddow, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't uh, watch that. Yeah, she does the same thing. That's why I don't yeah, watch I just, her. I probably have I don't, seen I don't her like, once. I don't like MSNBC because basically I think those guys are pandering to me. You know, mm -hmm. I'd rather watch Fox where I know it's the enemy, you know? <laughs> and, and 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 find great find great disdain in them. At least they're not trying to kiss my ass or, as I said, tickle my balls. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you know what? Can we talk about Jeff Sessions and whether he's going to get some uh, 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 real balls? Because they're pushing him into a corner. Is he going to fight back like the lawyer or the security person that he is, or is he just going to roll right over? Anybody? Uh, I don't think he's going to roll over. He's already pretty much made statements when Trump's made statements about him uh, that in indicate that you really don't fuck with Jeff Sessions because he's just not going to roll over. You know, Jeff, Se uh, Jeff Sessions is a, is a, uh, is a, is a asshole. OK, no question about it. But uh, he's a principled asshole. <laughs> so. You know, and he doesn't like the idea that the very people who he's managing are being assailed by this guy. You know, 
that the president, I mean, he, of course, uh, uh, Patrick, it should be known, is no Trump supporter, okay? So uh, don't ever get that idea. But you've got to feel uncomfortable, Patrick, with what, what, what's coming out, whether it's the Woodward book or whether it's this op-ed piece or whether it's just in general watching this man to s just absolutely have a, uh, a breakdown in front of us. I'm, I'm, I'm less worried about it than you guys are, and, and I'll say that generally, because I, I think there are enough people in enough places there, like Madison and, and some of the others that keep this shit in check. The, the thing is, if Twitter didn't exist, most of the stuff that we hear about and, um, are aware of, we would never be aware of or hear about because it would stay in the White House. And it might come out at rallies, but it wouldn't be a daily thing because you can't tell me Reagan, Clinton, both of the Bushes, Obama, they didn't have their days that they wanted to just blurt shit out and say, you know, fuck all y'all. But they didn't use Twitter. I mean, but, Obama... You know, even, even, if the, even if those people had Twitter, uh, uh, I don't think they would use it the way Trump is using it. They wouldn't, they would, to begin with, to begin with, Trump basically uses it as a bully pulpit. Good morning. Huh? What were you saying? Good morning. Yeah. A, a big bully pulpit. And, and calling people names and being a bully, basically... Uh, and what does that do uh, for uh, malaria's no bullying campaign? Melania, oh, malaria, malaria, whatever. Uh, malaria. Uh, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> it would be a bad thing, but in my case, since I spell like crap, it works really well. Because if you try to put Melania Trump in there, it'll autocorrect to malaria. So I leave it malaria. <laughs> you know, so, Marjorie has so something on her computer that she has to this very day that was started by uh, was offered by John Oliver. I don't know if it's still available, but it oh, works yeah. on hers. Every time the word Trump comes up in print, it's changed to Drumpf, which is the real family <laughs> name. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I, I, I was just kind of hoping Jeff Sessions is going to say, you know what, I'm with Mueller, I'm with everybody that I grew up with, I'm with the entire security system, all of that stuff, and I'm going to, and I'm going to say, fuck you, Trump, we're doing it the way we were always taught to do. You, but I, am I dreaming? Uh, am I drinking the Kool-Aid? First, uh, uh, Patrick, and then Je and, and no, Jeff. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, Jeff, Jeff first, and then Patrick. I don't have much pe many people to choose from here, so I'm just trying. I, I thought I was being democratic, but who cares? Yeah. Just uh, one, out, one out of two is not so bad. Uh, I was going to answer to Patrick because, I mean, there's a certain risk of having Trump as being the president. Don't you agree with that at all? I, I think there's a certain risk of any president being president. I mean, if, if, with Trump, I understand what you're getting at with a temperament and that sort of thing. However, well, it's there, a temperament. He lies every day, multiple times about uh, answering the same equation. Oh, yeah, the it, but don't lies don't necessarily impact us. In a way that really it can cause a lot of damage. It, it damages his own reputation. Um, what bothers me more than anything is the ill recognition from a lot of people on my side of the very thing that you're talking about. I mean, when I hear him lie, I know what he's bullshitting, and I just automatically put it in the bullshit side of my brain. That's why I don't want the rally, because I, I there's you've already, already, you've already put up a filter. Yeah. Right. You, you yeah. have a filter. You know, okay. Right. And the thing is, when you're 
implementer policy stuff, I I know what policy, and even the stuff dealing with uh, Jeff Sessions now. Him talking shit about Jeff Sessions, I put in the bullshit area, and I pay more attention to what Sessions is saying, and so that and it bothered me that there are people on my side that either are willfully being ignorant or are really just dumb and and have the, and don't have the ability to distinguish between what is bullshit and what is like the term dog whistle thing that people on the right want to hear even though he has no intention of pursuing them right um, you know and it just it it making us feel good he jerking our side off with certain thing and nobody's smart enough to say i think he's jerking us off on this one well, let's assume that that everything you said is is true and it and you're right and he's just been doing this to drive us crazy all right, that's all right. The problem is he has another job. It's called President of the United States. And he's spending much, much too much of his time of ignoring Girl. people. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, when I see him... The point, like, we really need the President of the United States. That's all we pay for. You know, we uh, let, let me let me bring something up here, and I think this is worth worth discussing. There's something to be said for the seasoned politician, okay? In that he's like a plumber who learns how to change your pipes, right? He he, 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 he take a seasoned politician. And he knows how to do this stuff, especially guys who come from being governors, as an example, all right? Uh, I would always prefer a governor to become president than almost any other part of government because they have to deal with, in, in, in microcosm, they have to deal with the same things, whether it's security or whether it's uh, a budgets or whatever. Uh, and then they simply fall into the president's office and it's just a larger version of the same job. But there's something to be said, in spite of the fact that everybody goes, oh, politicians, we don't need politicians anymore. We gotta just put the average guy into office. Well, here's an example of doing that. And it's a man with absolutely no experience whatsoever, okay? Who is not prepared for the job, doesn't know what it entails, and honestly believes that if you're president, you can just wave your hand and they will kill <laughs> Assange of kill Syria, you know? Um, uh, and and uh, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things that really bothers me about these reports coming out. True or not, the fact that there was a possibility that he may have asked that the leader of a foreign country be assassinated is, is pretty scary. Because that means he can ask for me to be assassinated. Yeah, yeah. and that's something oh, that oh, you would oh, learn oh, when oh. you were in the sixth grade. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Patrick. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say that, Jeff, that the United States has had for, I don't know if it's forever, but I know it's been as, as long as I've been alive and before that, there's a no assassination I, clause or whatever you want to call it, understanding. I don't know if it's written in or not, but, you know, and, and here's the thing. What people need to understand, and it's just like what Harry Reid did with the whole confirmation uh, process by getting rid of the supermajority with the su Supreme Court nominee deal, and he did that a couple years ago. Okay, that's coming to bite you guys in the ass. Now, just follow me here. If we assassinate a world leader, and let's say it, it the Trump people say, yeah, let's assassinate the uh, leader of Syria. What they're forgetting is you have now opened Pandora's box like Harry Reid did. And now another country could very well, even though 
they could do it anyway, but there seemed to be an understanding internationally, we don't take out world leaders. And what happened? What if our president gets assassinated by Syria or Iran or Canada or, you know, you, know, you can't do that. And that, that was one thing that I, I don't remember exactly how it went last night on your show, but I wanted to climb through my phone and choke Phil when he said, well, I like that idea or something like that. Because we can't allow that. We even, it doesn't matter who it is. If we're in a war, like with World War II with Hitler, mm -hmm. okay, it, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But in basic peacetime, like we are now, you cannot do that. And you can't, at a whim, order your military to do shit like that. But We're he not thinks, he, obviously, if this story is true, he thinks he can. Right, but thankfully, and it's what I was getting at earlier, there are people in there like Mattis that are smart enough that will say, yeah, 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 okay, okay, and then go and say, don't fucking do it. Just nod your head at him and... Well, here, here, he, Trump, he, he, he forgets about shit. He's so erratic that if he ordered a hit on the head of Syria, 20 minutes later, somebody throws one of the rings off of the milk jug down the hallway, <laughs> and he's running after. Him. Well, what's the name of the head of Thanks, uh, the head of Syria? Is Assad, right? Assad. Uh, Assad. 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 A yeah, a yeah. I'm, I'm just sorry. If he had wanted to assassinate Assange, I might not have disagreed, but. Yeah, we could put Assange, and then who's the other, uh, Edward Snowden, and then, well, then no. Assange. Well, no, Snowden's right. okay. You know, the more I read about Snowden, the more he's not okay. He, those two are after themselves, and that's it. They're not yeah. for any greater good. Yeah. yeah. South, uh, well, anyway, uh, the one thing, let me, let, let's just uh, uh, finish off with what this article is about, this op-ed piece. He says, the erratic <laughs> behavior would be even more concerning if it weren't for unsung heroes in and around the White House. Some of his aides have been cast as villains by the media, but in private they've gone to great lengths to keep bad decisions contained to the West Wing, though they are clearly not always successful. Uh Again, I, I wonder what his motive, this person's motivation is, his or hers, okay? Uh, Thank I you. I don't, I don't think it's a woman. I don't think so either, but you just got hell-bent on the his part. Yeah. Well. It could be. Well, don't, don't, don't think me a sexist because I assume it's a guy. <laughs> no, it was just that we were, we, so the thing is, and this but, is what as a matter of saying, fact, we, As a matter of fact, if you don't know if something is a he or she, it's usually referred to as a he, and that's kind of a cumulative. Uh, no, uh, in this country, in this country, that's well, true. Well, what do you do if in you other go, countries? In, in in different countries, it might be a she. By the way, that's, do you want to know uh, what the most non-sexist uh, name I ever heard uh, for for a woman? Okay. We have sexist non-assuming word. No, a non-assuming word. Uh, it was uh, started by Southerners. And it was adopted by Gloria Steinem. And the term was Ms. First time I ever heard it was when I was in the South. And I said, how come you always refer to women as Ms.? M-I-Z, basically, instead of M-S, which is what Steinem did with it. And uh, they said, oh, well, we don't mean any disrespect. We call them Ms. because when you meet a woman, you don't know whether she's married or not married. And if you say Ms., that would apply to both. So what could we? What term could we come up with to apply to both when we don't know whether somebody is going to be a man or a woman? Like in this situation, mm. you have that same problem when you meet a work friend or a work coworker. You don't know if their spouse is male or female, and so you have to say significant other instead of wife or husband. So I don't know what you would use in the other. Well, uh, what, Patrick might know whatever term they use. You know, yes, uh, uh, Patrick. I uh, I messaged uh, Phil and asked him if he was dead, 
He said that he wrote you yesterday. Yeah. Tonight was photo night. For first and second basic color category. Huh? I had the only photo in the category. MMA shot taken with John Perales. Yeah. Um, tell Alex to read his messenger. I would be <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil Meyer. Oh, uh, here it is, finally. Oh, uh, hey, I didn't read it. I didn't see it because it didn't pop up. Uh, it, it will be a Phil Free Wednesday photo club. What he came in, he came in in second place, and he was the only photo. Did you say? No, no, he went into multiple categories. And he, he won one of them. It sounds like. Yeah, I'd like to see this MMA uh, picture because he was supposed to have real up close access. So between him and John, this could be a really cool shot. Yeah, but I would like to see. I would like to see uh, how bad the other photos were. <laughs> well, know? I'd like Scott to call up. Yeah, Scott, <laughs> come on, you know. No, bad. Scott, it, it was because you were uh, you were misinterpreted I, what I was getting at. He misinterpreted what you were saying, actually. Right. Yeah. And, and he, I agreed with him that the rallies are off the rail, but that wasn't what I was talking about. It was the use of the terms off the rail, what a nice term that people on the left okay, want. Okay, but let me, let me ask you this, Patrick. Don't you think that we as lefties, and I think every American should be a little worried about this guy and about what he's capable of because he's, he, he can go so-called off the rails. I mean, we, we knew this. You and I knew this about the guy before he even ran for president. Every New Yorker knew it. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. This is very interesting. Mario Cuomo is running for mayor, governor again. And I can remember his name now instead of in my doctor's office. Um, he's running for, for, for governor again. And the, every ad he's running is an anti-Trump ad. We got to do the, you got to get Cuomo because we don't want Trump to do this. And we don't want Trump to do that. Not that as a governor he has a real shot at doing it, but, uh, you know, it, and it suddenly hit me. There's no other city or state, maybe California possibly, where you could run a campaign as being anti-Trump in order to win and win. Because New Yorkers, by and large, hate Trump, <clears throat> even Republican New Yorkers, yeah. because we've, they've lived with him for decades. And they know what he's all about. And they know the phony that he is. And, you know, yes, yes, uh, Jeff. That's why I won't admit that I grew up in Queens. <laughs> there you go. Prove it. Well, every, every time I go out to see Shecky, he picks me up with his car. And we <laughs> go back to his place and we pass the Trump, Trump. mansion. Why not? Uh, that is, it isn't theirs anymore, but it was. And then he took me once, he took me around the street and up the block. And in back of that house is the house where he was born. Well, that's know. cool. Yeah. Uh, Wait, the house where Shecky was born or Trump was Trump born? Trump was born. <laughs> ah, fuck that. Don't put that on my tour list. <laughs> oh, well. When I used to go to high school, I had to get on the train. And to get on the train, you had to get on the bus. The bus would go right by there. Oh, so you were you lived in Jamaica Estates? Well, I lived in Bayside. Oh, okay. But that's that's how to get to the train. Yeah. So, so I, but what I'm saying is, and I think that's the uh, un uncomfortableness we have that we didn't think that anybody could become president that could be so inexperienced, so egotistical. So of himself, I mean, he doesn't care about the America. He cares about Trump, and and we we were hoping that you know that as as somebody to the left, I was hoping that Trump somehow would turn out to surprise me. I wanted him to, you know. I didn't want him to turn out to be everything I expected he would be, but he's living up to everything I thought he would be and more. Yeah. And I'm and I I'm I'm. I shouldn't be frightened. Hell, at 78, who knows how many more years I've got, you know? But uh, as long as I'm here, I, I don't want to live in uh, in a world in which I don't get my Medicare, <laughs> you know? And I don't get my uh, Social Security. 
But he's no. They're gonna, they're going to take that. They want they want your they want your earned benefits like like your ex wife well, says. The way, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. They're earned benefits. I, they're not. I it's agree. Not, it's it's not a handout. And when it comes to Medicare, you pay for it every month out of your Social Security. So it's yeah, not I agree. it's not like you you have a, a free pass here. You know. Plus, you have to pay for your insurance for the other. A, you know, the 20%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. And I must have been the only person in the entire United States that when I heard that my Social Security and Medicare are entitlements, the interpretation of the term entitlement to me was and still is you are entitled to them because you paid for them. Mm -hmm. And that's why I couldn't believe when I when I started, as I got older, I kept hearing Democrats specifically bitching about that term, saying they're not entitlements, they're rights. And I'm thinking, isn't that what the fucking word well, means? Well, I think I think to begin with, the word entitlements it kind of gives you the attitude of, oh, so you think you're entitled, huh? You know that kind well, of thing, right? It's like a freebie. But, but but I like earned benefits, which my mm -hmm. wife came up with, because that's exactly what they are. They are earned benefits. They're benefits right. you get because you earn them over the years. You know, if you're somebody who didn't work that much over the years, uh, you're not going to get very much Social Security. But if you work a lot, you're going to get much more Social Security. I think I get the max, okay? Uh uh, people but if but that that's why i don't like Marjorie, the old word, the Marjorie, word that we used to Marjorie, know. who made less than i did in her lifetime gets slightly less than i do you know yeah i i, I like your uh, your ex-wife's earned i like earned benefits earned, i think that earned, explains earned, well, it all well because also you know we have paid into it you pay in you paid into it every year to a maximum of about nine thousand ten thousand dollars a year uh, and, and so it's not something you're entitled to it because you, it's your money. That's why you're entitled to it. You know, so earned benefits, I think, is the best way to put it. And then nobody can argue against that or get a negative connotation out of that. Well, good luck trying but, to sell that word. Yeah. yeah. Either side. And yeah. not, even, not even just to the right, but to the left. Because it's it, it, it been so long... That, that that the term's been used that it you're not going to change people's mentality. Let's briefly briefly change the subject to something that's close to Renee's heart. I saw the story today finally came out that Ozzy Argento, who was accused of uh, of uh, uh, having sex with this underage child, uh, that she said that she was actually attacked by him. Which is interesting because Ozzy Argento is one of the formers and uh, one of the people who created uh, Me Too. Uh, always talked about the victim uh, becoming guilty of something. And she's, this is what she's doing with this kid. Exactly the same thing. How do, you, how do you explain that exactly? Do you just write off uh, 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 Asia Argento as just a, a bad seed that gives bad name to the rest of the movement? Or do Is this like an R. Kelly thing? What? Where, he's, where R. Kelly... Doesn't anybody know that R. Kelly's fucking people that are underage? Or am I the only person that knows this? Uh, no. I, I couldn't name a song by R. Kelly. I know her okay. name. So you're telling me that there's so I don't know who this woman is and she's got a son. You're gonna have to fill Argento in. was uh, first of all uh, to put her in uh, context. You will understand was Anthony Bourdain's girlfriend. Okay. Okay. Uh, she is also the daughter of uh, Dario Argento, who is a really famed Italian horror filmmaker. Cool. Uh, and uh, she got into movies, I guess, because her father was in the movies, and she did a lot of her father's films as well. And I know I've known the name Asia Argento. I've known it well enough that I know it's Asia and not Asia. Okay, uh, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. a, 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 that I know who she is. Um, so when she came out with all these claims against Harvey Weinstein, I, I knew exactly who she was. 
But it just seems that the, that the the Me Too movement doesn't know exactly how to handle this now, because she did, well, she's doing some of the things they accuse men of doing. Okay. Well, they're probably saying those tactics works against them, so they might be using them for them. But let let can we talk about? Um, Okay, talk about let's talk about Louis C.K. for a moment. Okay. And then let's talk about Al, Al whatever his name is. Louis C.K. is trying to push this to get back in front of everybody. There's two things I want Louis C.K. to do. I want to admit when he whipped out those dick that no woman in that room was a comedian. No, they because the they, right they, answer they, to a man whipping out his dick in front of you in a business meeting is laughing your ass off. Well, no, what I'm saying is that I think they all were comedians and very bad ones because if I was a comedian and he whipped out his dick, I would have an appropriate line for it. You know? Right, and, that, and they did not. <laughs> yeah. And so that that's kind of a big deal. But they did not because they thought that, that if they said something, they would lose their job. You know something? So I'll, I I'll tell you. Here, here's why I feel, I feel sorry for Louis. I, I've known Louis in the past. He's a nice guy. I found him a decent guy. Most people will say that they like him, that he he's a, he's a decent person. Uh, he, he made what were... Uh, some regret. I mean, I would never. Let me put it this way: I would never you think of wh whipping my dick out. Okay, I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he thought he was being funny. Who knows? <laughs> you know. But all I'm saying is, when, when we put this up against Spacey, against Weinstein, yeah. against yeah. Uh, the doctor who was, you know, the Olympic doctor, people like that, uh, he, Louis C.K. did practically nothing. OK, but he was in that first wave of people who were outed. And that's why he's not working now, because, you know, Ryan Seacrest was was accused. And when he was accused, they just kind of looked at it and said, we we don't think so. And they let him keep working. Now, that was because it was later down the line. OK, do you get what I'm saying? In other words, yeah. if you were if you were the, the if you were the class of of, of 15, of, of, of Harvey Weinstein. Of if you were in the vicinity of Harvey Weinstein and Bill Bill Cosby Bill, in that time well, period, well, Bill Cosby, you got well, immediately swept Bill up. Bill Cosby is the it, well, actually, Bill Cosby is the grandfather of this. Okay, uh, he came huh? before uh -huh. any of all of this. Okay, he was kind of not part of the Me Too wave. He was already, mm -hmm. huh? He created it. No, no, you got to go back a little. Uh, 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 well, no, I guess yeah. Woody Allen came after him. If you, Woody if, Allen if came you, after who? After Cosby, when it came to the question improprieties. Now, I question whether Woody Allen, you know, uh, is uh, is guilty of anything, mm -hmm. uh, because there's been no proof to that. You know. Well, she was so. All of that was an underage issue and well, well, a well, well, disgusting me, uh, husband he, he, issue. He was outed by Ronan Farrow in an article because Ronan oh. Farrow wants to get even with him for what he did to mommy. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not and Ronan Farrow's a little sleazy prick. You know. Well, was she underage? Uh, who was underage? Sun, 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 Sun Yi, I think she Sun may Yi. have been underage, but look, they got married. Nope, but Wait a minute. Hold on a second. They got married, and they had been married for the last 20 years. This has been a 20-year, very successful marriage. Right, but the issue is is that she was underage. That, that's the real uh, issue. I, was she so under, that's, was she because underage? Because that's where the law or, is. Or was it, no, wait a minute. Was she underage? I don't know if she was underage when the act took place. I think... She was of age, but what made it so horrible in their mind, in everybody's mind, was it was his stepdaughter or his adopted daughter that he had sex with. I don't think it was an age issue. But you know who cleaned that off the off the slate? Yeah. Who completely wiped anything that we have about uh, uh, Woody Allen in our heads about what a pervert he uh, is. I mean, lowering the bar as far yeah. as who, who Donald Trump touching his daughter. Oh my God! So, so it just, it just the way he grabs her 
that will be in, well there's in a guy who's been given brain. a me too pass completely Oh, big time. If he wasn't president, they would have stomped him. We would have been tracking his ass down the street in New York City, and I don't think any woman would have stopped us. I, I'm sure that the stories that we've already heard about Trump that way are, are, are small in comparison to the total number over the years. All right? I mean, the fact that this guy would go into the Miss Teen USA pageant, right, and watch, so, watch the girls taking their clothes off, is it's a, a little, crime. It, 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 uh, yes, it is. Depending a crime. on their age, it's a crime. Yeah, and after he made that statement, nobody went out and investigated the Miss Teen USA pageant. They should have, you know. But I mean, uh, it, it, I guess uh, uh, we could call him. Oh, hi, hi. Ready for this? The Teflon Don. Uh, no, because. Uh, He's right. He could run, kill somebody in the middle of New York City, and nobody's well, going to prosecute. I mean, for him. all this stuff, we all the stuff we know about him, we know his association with the mob. You know, I mean, his lawyer was Roy Cohn. Roy Cohn was the mob's lawyer. Okay, uh, we know about all that, and they still elected him. These morons out in the Midwest somewhere. Who are they? These crazy assholes who say well he's good with money i saw him on tv every week you know somebody <sighs> somebody mentioned that i'll go to you patrick somebody mentioned that what they set <laughs> up <laughs> with the, the, the apprentice the apprentice set up uh the whole possibility of the presidency because it cast him he said they said look at the lighting on donald trump and those shows in the boardroom you know the spotlight on him he's perfectly manicured looks like the boss you know, looks, and they said they did everything in that show, at least in the last couple of seasons, to make him look positively presidential. You know, and that's the image that those yutzes out in the hinterlands who only know the world they watch from reality TV knew of Donald Trump. That's, he got elected on The Apprentice. Yes, Patrick. And he got elected from every news station oh. uh, CNN, yeah. MSNBC Fox all of them are just as guilty because they never carried the same number of rallies or, or meet and greets of Ted Cruz or uh, Bush or any other Republican running it was Donald Trump and it was Donald Trump because I think you're right because The Apprentice he was the reality star. Oh, this will be interesting. This will be funny. This will be this. This will be that. All right. So he got more free advertising than any of the other Republicans running oh, combined. I, I, I think he had less to spend than they did. I mean, Hillary had a war chest that would choke a horse. And... Um, he didn't have to deal with any of that, you know, because he knew how to get the press to turn out just because they wanted to make fun of him. I mean, that election was made and paid for by MSNBC, CNN, Fox, Headline News, Newsmax. I mean, they just f ate it up because, uh, hey, he, he might say something goofy. Hey, listen, he said something goofy. Oh, we get on that. You know, and the, and to this day, they're suckers for that bait. I mean, how many times does yeah, he go on? Does they he go on and, and do a speech, a speech at the a speech at the Omaha State Fair, and they're yeah, covering it, fuck. and they're covering it. Yeah. And, that, and that, I would, that's what I was just gonna say. Even now, they'll sit and they'll bitch on MSNBC and CNN about him calling them fake news. And yet they're broadcasting his, his name for the same reason as before. It let's see if we can catch him in a gotcha moment. And they're not thinking, leave it alone. Well, this is yeah. why I've been saying, look, he says you're the enemy of the people. He says you're fake news. He does everything to insult you. In the case of NBC now, he's asking that they check into whether they can revoke their license. Right. Which yeah. the networks do not, the networks don't have a license. Uh, he should be informed of that. Uh, 
Uh, and, so and if they're doing that, wait a minute, if they're doing that, why are you even following him like this? Just report him when he does something worthwhile, which would be about once a week. And well, he'll he'll go nuts if you don't react to him. But he does it to, every morning. Every, uh, Joe Scarborough is reading the latest Donald Trump tweets. Leave, fuck, don't pay attention to him. He, let him. If he doesn't like you, uh, you know, if you if you meet up with a woman and it turns out she doesn't like you, don't keep pursuing trying to date her. Okay. Yep. That's the way it should be. I agree. So wasn't Ronan Farrow's letter? So the letter we were discussing the other day about you believed it, and I was thinking that it's more PR. Wasn't that a letter from NBC? Well, the, uh, the, the, their explanation for why Ronan Farrow's story didn't run. They said right. that they were. Was they, that NBC? They, well, they sent a memo out to their people saying that uh, uh, the reason why they didn't run the story at that point, it wasn't that they weren't going to run it, but at that point, is that Ronan Farrow had no sources. He had no sources that he could name. Okay, and that he went. That the wisest uh, people at at NBC looking over this material said, "We can't do this yet. It's not ready." Right. So the letter came. So he went somewhere else, and he got the story done. So that letter came out saying exactly what you said. Yeah. But isn't the impre- uh, Apprentice on NBC? What does that have to do with it? Well, because. If the if the, the your if the president of the United States saying I want to yank your license, mm-hmm. what is it that you're going to say to come out to a Roman Pharaoh? Is just say, you know, the story wasn't there, it wasn't ripe, it wasn't ready. Well, what does wash that, your what, hands, what does that have cover to do? your legal butt, what does that have to and do just with, what, wash what your hands of it. With, and it's, what does that have to do with the Apprentice? Same company. It's no, it, no, it, no, NBC no. did not want to. Piss off the president anymore no. and get on his line. Well, no, That's Ronan why they Farrow, did the Ronan rebut. Farrow's stories weren't about the president; they were about Harvey Weinstein. Right, but the the people running all of it is the same group. It, it, all they wanted to do was Weinstein's lawyers were constantly saber rattling at it NBC, so NBC mm-hmm. wanted to make sure that they had all the facts before they ran the story. Uh, Andy Lack said that we weren't considering not running the story because of the threat and legal action by the Trump people, I mean by the Weinstein people, uh, but we we wanted more facts so that in case we did get sued, you know, we could say, hey, we did our due diligence, we, 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 have, we have the sources, uh, we can name the sources, on and on and on. But, he, but Ronan Farrow didn't have any of that. When he went to the New Yorker, he then did more research, realizing he didn't have the sources he could name and found some say, sources he could name. Then the New Yorker let him run the story. Well, I'm saying that letter sounds like CLYB to me, which is cover your legal butt. Well, I think I th- uh, you've been accused, so you're going to say what you felt went on. And, and now it's become a he said, she said story. You right. Know, and so it, we're never going to get the end uh, of this you know, because Rodan, you're right. Because they told Ronan Farrow, hey, if you want to go somewhere else and do the story, be our guest. And Ronan Farrow, uh, because he, he supposedly asked, and Ronan Farrow says, I never asked. They just told me to, they wouldn't do the story. So I took it somewhere else. And, you know, well, now, but, you said that they didn't, he can't pull NBC's license? What? Uh, NBC doesn't have a license. The you only, don't have to have a license. The, the, the to only that? licenses they ever had were the ownership of radio and television stations. And if it's uh, my thinking, uh, there are only a few television stations they own and a few radio stations. They, I don't think they own radio stations anymore. I think they just own television stations. Okay. So Good he could know. he could try to pull those licenses, but you but he said pull the license of NBC. You know, as a network, you can't do that. They don't have a license. They've never had a license. They are. They don't use four-letter words on NBC because they don't want to get their affiliates in trouble. Because their affiliates, <laughs> when when the when the breast got exposed with the J- Janet, Janet Jackson, Jackson, the people who got fined were all the individual TV stations, not the network. Oh, that had to hurt. Yeah, 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 Patrick. Quickly. Yeah, I, I mean, Trump not knowing that is the same as Trump saying that John McCain left North Korea early, not realized that <laughs> yeah. five fucking years ago. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, listen, I got to go. 
But uh, you know something? Uh, we only had <laughs> four people tonight. Scott left us in, in, in a half or a minute and a half. And uh, but we, we we love you, Scott. If you're listening, please come back. You know, call uh, into Jack Show. Call, he'll call into Jack Show. And okay. and and, and uh, uh, but the three people and it's uh, if I had the same three people every night, it'd be a great show. I uh, thank you very oh, much, uh, Renee. Uh, I thank, thank you, Patrick, you. and I thank <laughs> you very much, Jeff. And I think right now is about the appropriate time for all of you to do a big wave goodbye. There they are, folks. Goodbye. Okay, anyway, uh, that's it. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Not huge, but mighty. And I think that that's the important part of all of this. Uh, it's a good, but anyway, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the uh, intersection, followed uh, probably with more people calling him tonight than called me. Uh, and uh, to uh, tomorrow night uh, at, at 1 o'clock, it's Connections. They're back on live again. Uh, not live, but with a new show tonight. And then uh, we'll be back again after Damian Chaplin holds down the exchange at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.